We're now going to talk about optimization with constraints. So the most basic example of this kind of problem is to minimize or maximize some function in f of two variables, x and y, subject to the constraint g of x, y equals k. So now we have two functions here. f is the function which we want to make as big or as small as possible. And the function g is a restriction. So we're not allowed to consider arbitrary x and y. We're required to consider x and y only on the level set of g, usually a curve, where g is equal to k. So let's do an example. So let's find the isosceles right triangle with hypotenuse 10 with the largest possible area. Right, so this is a very simple example of such a problem. So to clarify the statement here, so here's our triangle. Let's denote the side lengths of the triangle by x and y. So the hypotenuse is this third side, and our constraint, well, well so its length is the square root of x squared plus y squared, and our constraint is that that length should be 10. So we're trying to maximize the area, and the area, we can call that f of xy, is xy over 2. And the constraint is g of xy equals the square root of x squared plus y squared is required to be 10. OK, so the simplest way to do this, so the most basic or simplest approach, is to use the constraint to eliminate a variable. Okay, so we know that y equals the square root of 100 minus x squared, right? That's so if I just square both sides of this equation and subtract, I get this equation for y. And so the function f of x, y is just a function of x. So it's x times square root of 100 minus x squared divided by 2. And what's the domain here? Well, x has to be greater than or equal to 0. And x can't be any bigger than 10, or else y would not be defined in the real numbers. Okay, So we now want to maximize this function, where x goes from 0 to 10. And since this only depends on x, let's call this g of x. Okay, And now we can do this using single variable methods. So we're trying to maximize g of x equals x times the square root of 100 minus x squared over 2 for x going from 0 to 10. So now we calculate the derivative, g prime of x is when I, so when I differentiate the x here, 
I get the square root of 100 minus x squared over 2 plus x over 2 times the derivative of square root of 100 minus x squared. So that's um, 1 over 2 square root of 100 minus x squared times the derivative of 100 minus x squared, which is minus 2x. So this is square root of 100 minus x squared over 2 uh, minus, um, well, x squared over 2 square root of 100 minus x squared. And I can simplify this expression by multiplying in the first fraction the top and the bottom by the square root of 100 minus x squared. So then I get 100 minus x squared over 2 square root of 100 minus x squared minus x squared over 2 times the square root of 100 minus x squared. And now I can combine the fractions to write this as 100 minus 2x squared over 2 square root of 100 minus x squared. And why am I doing this? Because I want to find where g prime equals 0. So the candidates for the maximum are points where g prime equals 0 and points on the boundary of the interval. Now on the boundary of the interval, I have g of 0 equals g of 10 equals 0. So that doesn't look like it's going to be the maximum. And the only other possibility is, is where g prime equals 0. So g prime of x equals 0 if and only if uh, 100 minus 2x squared equals 0. So that's if and only if um, x squared equals 50. And that's going to be true if and only if x equals the square root of 50. Of course, x equals minus the square root of 50 is also a solution to this equation, but it's not in the domain, so we don't ignore it. We, we ignore it. Okay, and so then for this x, well, y is the square root of 100 minus x squared, and if I put in x equals the square root of 50, then I get that y is also the square root of 50. And so the maximum is f of square root of 50, square root of 50, which is um, uh, 50 over 2, which is 25. Okay, so we've proved that the um, maximum area is obtained by taking both of the legs of the triangle to have equal length, square root of 50, square root of 50, and then the hypotenuse will have length 10, and the triangle will have the maximum possible area 25. Okay, so that works just fine. However, there is a fancier method of solving this problem which is very useful for more difficult problems of optimization with constraints. So I will show you that in the next lecture segment.